Thursday and it's uh, July 2nd. No, July 1st. What is it? July 1st or July 2nd? <laughs> Who knows what day it is? I don't know. Yes, it is July 1st. Um, and it's raining again. Boy, something different for a change. A little bit of rain never hurt anybody, right? We'll go down this way. We'll go down 21st, get a oops. Well, it's got a fairly long way. Hopefully, we can get across here. And, uh, yeah, we have Neil put out his first statement. And, uh, uh oh. See, there's not a, they're not aggressive drivers like most bus drivers are. You gotta be aggressive. Come on, come on, come on. There you go. You can do it. Go across. Uh, yeah, I'm not expecting much of a change, you know, I don't expect anything to change. Well, actually, I, I know nothing will change for me personally, because, uh, and, you know, Fred really had nothing to do with my job anyway, really. You know, he was in a parallel universe called Executives. Somebody calling me? Oh, I'm well, sorry, I can't, can't answer the phone right now. Uh... Well, the big news for me is blogger Vance Longwell, uh, <laughs> uh, the blogger, he's always on the opposite side of the fence of everything that I seem to be on. But, and he also has his own web, his own blog, Zero Times Any Number, and he's kind of my kind of ranter, you know, I've, I've watched some of his stuff and I, I kind of like his style. He's not afraid to say what's on his mind, and I like that about people. And he thinks about what he writes, and you know, he's a he's an above the belt puncher. He's not one of those let's be sneaky bloggers and see how what we can get out of the situation for us, like some people we know. So yeah, we're gonna get together and have a few beers and debate over a few beers, and that should be quite exciting. You know, uh, I'm looking forward to that. I, I really enjoy meeting bloggers that. Uh, that I know online and I enjoy meeting them. It's something I've always liked. I've, you know, I put out a lot of uh, requests to various people I've met online, and, and almost to a number, they're always very receptive to getting together. And the people need to do that, you know. Maybe if we'd been more willing to do that, all of this crap that blew up at Bike Portland might not have happened. But anyway, that's a nice thing to have for me to look forward to. I can't do it this weekend because I have to go to Canada for a couple of days. But maybe the next weekend, weekend after that, pretty pretty soon we'll do that. And he's around here, I guess he's over in the PSU area and up in Northwest, so we're close. So we can meet somewhere around here. And we're all eagerly awaiting the postings, the sign-up postings. I guess it's going to be next week, next Monday. Sometimes they put them up early, like Friday. So we're all eagerly awaiting the service cut stuff and see how that affects our jobs. Um, we don't know. I mean, it's really hard to tell what's going to happen there. We do know that the loads are going to be heavier. I, I don't know if the west side, you know, it seems like most of these cuts coming up here are in the Portland district. Uh, you know, the west side already got hammered pretty good. I know they're cutting out some service on 52s and 57. The heavy use runs are getting cut back. Which, and those runs are already packed anyway, so that's going to be hell. Uh, I don't know, we're just going to have to wait and see how the sign up looks. But they're still adding lots and lots of managers over there, man. There's lots and lots of managers being added. Lots of jobs, high paying jobs at TriMet, just no bus driver jobs. And it's interesting how that is, you know, I mean, I'm pretty sure all these jobs get funded out of the same pot, i.e. the payroll tax. And it's just kind of odd to watch them filling all of these jobs, you know, 100k plus, while they're cutting services. Now, to TriMet's credit, they didn't actually cut anybody off the payroll. But that, that does set them in a league above the other big transit district crises. 
So for that, they do get my credit, my uh, kudos. I mean, they actually staved off however they did that. Look at this guy. Look out, buddy. Learn how to drive. Oh, there he goes again. I bet he's drunk. Um, I know that Sam Schwartz is going to propose the end of the three-day PTO, part-time operator of the three-day. And we need to make that on record that we do not support. I'm a permanent part-timer here, and uh, every part-timer I've talked to does not support ending that three-day work week. And I don't understand why any part-timer would want to actually eliminate options for themselves. Now, Sam Schwartz uh, said, well, the, the company's only giving us like 25 hours or something. They're not giving us the 30 hours or whatever. But union has to wake up to one thing. Not everybody here, not everybody here is programmed just for money. That's, that's not everybody's programming. Some people actually prefer smaller shifts. So just because there's not all 30 day shift, 30 hour shift doesn't mean you get rid of the whole program. I, I, I don't support getting rid of the three day part time operator program and I, I haven't talked to any three day or any part timer at all that supports getting rid of it. Now if the full timers think that somehow that will help them to get rid of that, <coughs> remember you're going to all be working weekends again. The full timers, you're going to back on weekends and it will take you another 15 years to get off of them. So the full-time people shouldn't be all up in arms about it either. Leave it, leave it the way it is, you know. It helps TriMet. It gives us more options. It allows full-timers to get uh, weekends off. So I don't support ending the three-day work weekend. I don't think I've met anybody that does any part-time. We want that to continue. So don't do that, Sam. And we're going to be at the next union meeting. And uh, we're going to support a motion to make sure the motion will read that we do not, we the union do not, or we the union members do not support ending the three-day PTO. Keep that program, keep it alive and well, because it's a good thing. It gives us more options, and options are good, especially since a lot of us, the, the part-timers that came to this company with the intent of going full-time are stuck stuck down there on the bottom and you want to make them you know you don't you don't want to subject them to more suffering than you have to and some of those people are stuck on these dreadful split shifts you know which is the most dreadful way to live known to any employer employees living like coming to work twice in a day getting up early in the morning and having to come back. There's nothing worse. Now, if, you, if you're forced into doing that, it's better to do that three days a week than five days a week. And that's what the three-day offers, is you don't have to do this five days a week, getting up, going, you know. Nobody wants to live like that, nobody. Nobody wants to live on a split-shift lifestyle, unless they have some valid reason to do it, like there is a... Uh, People sometimes have stuff in the middle that they want to do. Sometimes it's, it does work for some people. But for me, that's like the worst lifestyle that you can imagine is a three, a five-day split shift lifestyle. It's just horrible. Unless you, some people, I know, I'm not condemning it to everybody. Some people actually like it. But you got to have choices available. And I, I don't know what I would do if I had to go live like that again. I don't think I would stay. I would definitely try to find a way out. Uh, you know, I'm too old to uh, be living like a slave anymore, and I'm not going to do it. You know, I don't have to do it, and I'm not going to do it. Uh, I'm in a lucky position where I do have some options at least. I'm not completely, oh my God, what will I do if something happens to this job over here? I've never liked living in that position of being a slave, a wage slave, scared of everything. That's just such a horrible way to have to live as far as I'm concerned.